Hello, my Front Forge friends. Coming to walk with Palmer and me down this old dirt road. This day is almost like heaven. We had the rain come through, kind of blew all of the humidity out, and now we just got a nigh perfect day, as my grandmother would probably say. <laughs> Here, Palmer, you wanna go show them how you can fish and catch sticks? Come here, buddy. Oh, sure, yes. You wanna go fish? Come on, come here, buddy. Come on. You wanna show you, let me Palmer show you his tricks. He is a brilliant dog. He fishes for rocks and sticks. You ready to watch him? Watch this. Here we go. We're down at close to the rock. Look. Oh, no, hang on. Watch. Watch. Look at that eager face. That's the face of anticipation. Look at this. Ready? Okay. You ready to go? Here we go. Go get it, buddy. That is a, oops, happy dog. Thank God he did not shake right here in front of me and you. I have a word I want to share with you. So, this week and last week, I've just been, you know, dealing with some stuff, challenges, like we all have all the time. And I've been experiencing something sweet from the Lord that I just want to share with you that I think will help you as, as much as it does me. And it's so simple. And then yet it led me to share with you a truth that is not so simple. It's actually profound in the word. But the simple thing is this, it comes from the scripture that just basically tells us from the Lord to cast all of our cares upon him because he cares for us. Now, if you're like me, there, every day we're dealing with this, this you know, cares of our life, that, that children, our families, those things that are just, we deal with every day, every day. Maybe it's your health and, or whatever. And sometimes it's just more than we have answers for. Sometimes it's stuff way beyond what we can fix. And we can't, let me sit down in this wonderful chair out here by the creek. And so, I've just spent this week and last week, every single day, especially at night when I can't sleep, visualizing the reality, not some imaginary friend. No, the truest, most real friend and person that there is in the universe. The reality, I envision the reality of Jesus standing before me as he does you. And I just take, uh, it's like I, I, I visualize and see myself taking every care individually. Maybe it's just the care of a particular child or the care of a particular grandchild, or the care of a particular situation in your, your body, your finances, whatever. And I just visualize myself taking it, putting it in my hand, then I just visualize myself handing it to him and just leaving it in his hands, letting it go. Especially at night, I love to do this at night. Right before I'm going to bed, I just, I, I kneel down, I love to just see myself saying, Father, here, you take this, you take this, here's this care, okay, take it. And I, visual, I visualize myself, not only, not only giving it to him, but I visualize myself letting it go letting you got to release it and let it go so i make sure that when i see it in the spirit realm i'm not just seeing me pretending like i'm giving it to me and i'm taking it back nope i when i see it i have let it go it's not in my hands anymore i think i'm getting stung so i'm gonna have to stand up over here so i let it go i release it in his hands and i walk away and i just take the next thing and i say now nah. and also lord here is this too you take this let it go. Don't walk away. Now I'll take this situation or this person. Just walk up to him. Just give it to him. Here, take this too. Now walk away. And if it's at night, I'll give it to him because I sometimes have to do this several times a day. 
But if it's at night, I will let it go. And I will say to him, okay, I'm giving this to you and I'm going to sleep. And it just helps me. I remember one time I said to the Lord, Lord, since you're going to be up all night anyway, I'm going to give this to you and go to bed. <laughs> because the Bible says he never sleeps, he never slumbers. And you know what? Our little burdens, they seem huge to us. What are, what are they to the one who holds the world in his hands, who holds the earth on the end of his finger like it's a little grain of sand? What is it? What, what are our cares to the one who, who Jesus said with God, all things are possible. Oh. So I cast it off on him. Why? Why do we cast him on him? He cares for us. He cares for you. He cares about what you're carrying. So that led me to this. So I just began to realize the value of rest. I rest it in your hands. That is where I find my rest. I find rest. The only way I find rest is to know that I have released it to the Lord and I have given it to him, then I find rest. Otherwise, if I hold on to it, worry, worry, worry. So I began to ponder this thing about resting. And I, there's a scripture that I just love. And I, let me go to it. Hopefully, I, I don't know if there's ants in this bench or what, but anyway. Try this again for my Bible is. I love this scripture, and I want you to mark it in your Bible well, okay? It's 1 Peter. Make sure it's first. Yes, 1 Peter. And the chapter, chapter 2, and it's talking about when you've been being done wrong, and, and maybe you've been hurt by somebody, and, and you just feel like you are suffering from the pain of maybe it's betrayal or somebody that's just said something to you that just devastating. It's hurtful. And, and the closer people are to you, the more it hurts when they say things, you know? And so, but this scripture is just so interesting. And maybe you feel like it's been unjust. Maybe you feel like things have been said about you or to you. That's not fair. It's not right. It's like, that's not true. Anyway, and you can't do anything about it. You can't fix it. So look here. 1 Peter 2 and verse 21. It's talking about Jesus. <clears throat> for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. Now, here's the one we follow. He never sinned nor deceived anyone. Watch this. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. Now that line is the one that jumped. He left his case in the hands of the one who always judges fairly. So powerful. In other words, when Jesus was done wrong, when he was misunderstood, when he was lied about, when he was hurt, when he was suffering, I love that scripture. It says he didn't retaliate against the people that had hurt him. No. Nope. What did he do? He left his case in the hands of the one who judges fairly. There is so much in that. It's what I was just talking about. I'm giving this to you, and I'm letting it go. I'm giving this to you, and I'm letting it go. In other words, God, that I can do that, woe, as my father. Like at night, I look at Jesus like my father, my friend, I'm giving it my burdens. This speaks of something even more serious for me. When it says I left, he left his case in the hands of the one who judges fairly. It's like when you've been done wrong and there's something that's been treated, you've been treated unjustly. When there is injustice involved in your situation, it, it's like sometimes you've got to go to a higher place. And I love the fact that God represents himself in the word in many, many, many ways. In prayer, there are specific ways God reveals himself to us in prayer. He reveals to us, he, his, in, in, of course, the Lord's prayer, it's a father. So I love that. That's, a very, that's very, very common for me. I often pray to God as my father. I love seeing myself as a little girl with her daddy. So that's very intimate. Then God reveals himself in Luke 11 with uh to us as in prayer and it's about prayer jesus said i'm going to teach you more about prayer and what does he do he teaches us about prayer in luke 11 as a friend to a friend 
there's a friend needing bread from a friend and that friend that needs the bread goes to the house of his friend and he knocks on that door even though the uh, the friend in the house is saying don't bother me don't bother me come on i'm not going to get up and get out of bed i'm not coming to the door no but the friend at the door doesn't keep knocking on the door of the friend's house because he knows it's a friend inside and he knows that i'm going to keep knocking even though he could call the police and have me removed for trespassing but i ain't gonna go i'm not gonna stop because he's my friend and because he's my friend and we've got quite a history he ain't gonna call the cops so i'm just gonna stand here and knock 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 i'm gonna knock all night long till he opens the store and gives me the bread so the father reveals himself to us as a friend that we can just keep asking keep asking but the third way that that god reveals himself in prayer this is powerful in luke 18 but it's also all through the bible and i, I don't have time to go into it today now this is the profound and deep study that can take you for a long time down this road. And in fact, I'm gonna say right here, the greatest per, the greatest revelation I've ever uh, read about from this is a man named Robert Henderson. He wrote a book called The Courts of Heaven. And, and you can get it on Amazon, I'm sure, The Courts of Heaven by Robert Henderson. He has the greatest revelation on this of anybody I've ever seen. But anyway, let me say this. God reveals himself in Luke 18 with the widow standing before the unjust judge. Bangs, I have my hair cut today. And so, and she, she is standing before the unjust judge. And I love what she says, because in this passage, in prayer, God reveals himself as judge. So now let me say this again. There's three places right there that God reveals himself as father in prayer. He reveals himself as a friend in prayer, but he also reveals himself as a judge in prayer. And I love that because there's different things that we need in prayer. Sometimes when I'm just feeling like I need a daddy, he's my father. When I've got a friend that's got something I need, he is my friend in prayer. And I can go to a friend's house. That's what the, Jesus said. But there's times when I'm dealing with injustice and I'm dealing with something that I cannot fix. And it is, it is unjust. It is not right. And, and it's, it's more than just a daddy thing. I need a judge. I need somebody that can judge fairly in this situation. Then God reveals himself as a judge. Now, this is a big deal because in Luke 18, you've got the woman going before the unjust judge who is saying to the unjust judge, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. Give me justice in this dispute. Give me justice. She needs justice. And when you've got a justice issue, when you've got something that, that it's a, like a, a big deal, and basically, you need to go to the courts of heaven. Now, I'd never, I'd never even heard of Robert Henderson or ever heard of such a thing as the courts of heaven until 1995. And I was dealing with a situation that was very deep, very personal, very intense, and it was a justice issue. And, and I mean, it was beyond my ability to fix. It was beyond, it was involving my children. It was, it was huge. It was everything to me. And so I remember as in 1995, that's a long time ago, I went up to a hill outside my house here, way up on the high hill. And I remember, I, well, I needed to be alone with God because I just got off the phone with, the, with a demonic spirit that was just horrible, threatening, and just awful. So I went up to that hill, and I remember I literally, and I'd never even heard of this, but it came up out of my spirit. And I just declared, Lord, I call for the convening of the courts of heaven. I call for the convening of the courts of heaven. And all of a sudden, in the spirit realm, I was up on that hill, and I knew that I was in the courtroom of heaven. And I, before me was my, it was my father, but he was judge. And he was sitting at that judge's seat. He was right there. That's my father, but he right now is a judge. And oh, right there's my attorney. His name's Jesus, and he's my brother. But right here is the accuser of the brethren. And he's standing here, and he's got an accusation. And he has, he has attacked me, and he has done some things that's unjust and unright. He's a liar, for one thing, but also he has an accusation. And here I am standing here next to the accuser of the brethren, and I'm standing here before God. And I mean, I call for the courts of heaven, and I just, you know what I did that day? I presented my case to the judge. And what I did was I said, God, you hear what the enemy has said, and you see what he has done. And God... I am coming to you today to say, concerning my children, because it was concerning my daughters, I said, God, I want you, God, 
to do what you know is best for my children. That is my request to you today, God, is I'm asking you to intervene on the earth and do what is best for my children. If it's best for them to do this, then do it. If it's best for them to do that, but God, your will be done. And may the mouth of those that speak lies be stopped. And God, you prevail. And God, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. And I prayed that with everything in me. And honey, I knew when I presented it saying, Father, your will. God, I, I'm giving this to you. And then it was like I knew once I gave it to him and let it go, I could say, I presented all I know to present. I've said all I know to say. You know my heart. I want your will. And then it was this. So I rest my case. You hear that in the natural courts. I rest my case. I've said all I know to say. So now, but here's the deal. First Peter right there says, we don't just walk away and so say, I rest my case. No, I rest my case in the hands of the one who judges fairly. <laughs> I ain't just resting my case in the hands of a natural man. No, I don't trust that. I, tr I rest my case in the hands of the one who judges fairly. Honey, I knew that day when I gave it to him, I presented my case. I presented all, and I quoted the word. I knew the gavel went down in my favor, and all I heard was the Holy Ghost say to me, Miriam, pick up your tambourine and dance, because this enemy that you have seen, you will see no more. <laughs> I hear that for somebody watching me right now. Miriam, pick up your tambourine and dance because this enemy that you have seen, you will see no more. When you present your case to the judge of heaven and you've got Jesus as your attorney pleading your case for you, the Holy Ghost with you on the earth, pleading an intercession to Jesus who speaks to the Father on your behalf. Honey, you declare God your will be done in my children. Your will be done in my body. Your will be done in our finances. Your will be done in my job. Your will be done in my nation. You begin to present that case, honey, you've got all of heaven backing you up. And I love what the, what the Bible says in, uh, Judges, in, in Luke 18, the Bible says this, that the unjust judge says, he was an unjust judge. He, the Bible says, Jesus said it. He didn't care, he didn't care about God or even care about people. But you know what he said? He said, I'm going to give this woman what she wants because she is driving me crazy with her constant request. And Jesus said, I'm going to teach you about this woman to teach you how to pray and you never give up. And then Jesus said this about the unjust judge. He, go read it for yourself, Luke 18. He said, now you learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. And then Jesus said, so don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen ones, you, who cry out to him day and night? He said, I tell you, he will give them justice and he will give it to them speedily. In other words, God's going to answer you with justice. And honey, when he comes, it's going to come so fast, it's going to make your head spin. When his gavel comes down and he rules in your favor, that's the end of the matter. And it will become as he has said. It will be as God has said. And sometimes that manifestation is instant. And sometimes that manifestation takes place. But you, it takes place with a little time. But you know what? All you got to have is the word. All I need is the gavel going down with the word of my father behind it. When the judge speaks, that's the way it's going to be. And I believe to Today, the judge is speaking on your behalf, sweetheart. Now, I don't, I don't pray every day to the judge, to the courtroom of heaven. Most of the time, I pray to my father or my friend. But, but, but when I'm dealing with justice issues, when I'm dealing with, with issues that I need a court, I have a court. I have a judge. I have an attorney. The judge is my father. The attorney is Jesus, my brother. And the Holy Ghost is my friend inside me. And you know what? When we surrender our hearts to him, we pray his will be done. Then you can, con you can go into the courtroom of heaven. And like I say, I don't treat that place lightly. I don't even go there very often unless I have a justice issue. But when I'm there, I'm there with purpose. I'm there with a case that I am ready to present. 
I don't treat it lightly. It's not like a little place I just go in and out of every day, every day. Oh, no, no, no. This is a big deal. I've been there rarely. I could probably count on very few fingers how many times that I've actually in my life called for the convening of the courtroom of heaven. But I did it recently about an issue that, I, that we needed justice in because it was an attack of the enemy. And I just said, God, you see what he's done. And I'm standing here before you. And I'm going to rest my case in the hands of the one who judges fairly. Present your case before God. Present it with the word of God. Present it with a repentant heart of anything you need to repent of, as I have had to do too. Present anything, everything about the case that you know how to present. And then to call for his will, because we trust him. And after you've done all that, I rest my case. I rest my case in the hands of the one who judges fairly. What does that mean? I can give it to you now. I've heard your word and I can walk out in peace and rest. And remember what I've told you before the Lord told me, trust is worship, rest is warfare. Rest, when you come to a place of rest in your situation, you are then at the place of highest warfare that there is because you are at rest. That means you have come to a place of victory no matter what the circumstance looks like. Father, I pray for my sweet friend. Encourage her heart. Minister to him today, my brother, my sister. Lord, I pray today that you would give them greater revelation on this. Take them deeper into the rooms of revelation and reveal to them all that you have given them, all they have access to, all the places of prayer and the rooms of prayer that you have given them access to have. I pray, God, that you will encourage their heart today where they've been weary or discouraged. Pray, God, that today healing will come. Prodigals delivered. Provision made. Peace, Lord. Direction and wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. Restoration of families fully, for there's nothing too hard for you. We give it all to you in Jesus' name. We wait on you. You're worthy to be trusted. I love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, my sweet friend, comment below. Put in those comments right now. I rest my case. I rest my case in the hands of the one who judges fairly. I rest my case. And just put in there what you're believing for, okay? Comment. It's so important that you comment for so many reasons. It's our place of agreement. So let me hear from you. Just declare that right now. And you can say, I'm resting my case for our finances. I'm resting my case for my grandchildren. I'm resting my case into the hands of the one who is judging fairly for my family or my body. Whatever it is. But list it, list it, list it. And let me hear what God is speaking to you. I love you, sweet friend. Palmer, tell them bye-bye. Tell them bye-bye. There you go. He's resting his case right now. <laughs> I love you, sweetie. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.